A game of scrolls. A new king of steam. It's Monday the 28th of August and this is Patch Notes. The king in the north of your hard drive. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph, and here are the big stories from the weekend. First up, and two of nerd culture's fantasy crushes may be about to make sweet, sweet crossover love. Is that the bottom lip or the tongue? I don't know. I don't the think tongue. No one kisses like that. Really? A leak from American retailer Target has hinted at a Game of Thrones video game by Skyrim and Fallout developer Bethesda. Spotted by NeoGAF, an incomplete page on Target's website showed a listing for Bethesda colon Game of Thrones. Skyrim is basically Game of Thrones, just in a shitty engine. Are you gonna play this? If it exists, which I mean, may not. Let's just be clear, if it's fantasy, I'm gonna play it. She's there. I'm there. I mean, I don't know. This almost seems like a publicity hoax thing to me. You reckon? You know, like when they kind of when this stuff comes out and everyone's like, ah, oh, and then it turns out to be it's all a trick. Well, uh, Todd Howard has come out and said that there are five projects in development at Bethesda Studios in various stages. This could be one of them. Yeah, that's true. This could be one of them. The only thing I have, Skyrim to me is pretty much Game of Thrones, like 100%. The interesting part about Game of Thrones is all the like machinations, the political maneuvering, taxes, like, what do you do once the wars are I, I get what you're saying, it's Game of Thrones in the sense that it's set in a fantasy world and there are giant dragons in it. But I think, yeah, as you say, I think all of the story stuff to do with Game of Thrones is yeah. has not yet been represented in the game except Telltale. Telltale, Telltale did that one. But, you know, with the TV show wrapping mm. up, and I think there's, what, how many books left? Two, like, I two, yeah. two books left. Who knows? I'm ready to take this into the game world. Let's do it. Let's do it, if it even exists. <laughs> if it even exists. <laughs> Moving on, for a brief, beautiful moment, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was the biggest game on Steam. Over the weekend, PUBG spent some well-deserved time at the top of Steam's current player leaderboard. With 877,000 players concurrently online, it managed to knock Dota 2 out of the top spot. Peter, no longer the king, for a brief moment. Except, well, first of all, I'd like to point out, Peter was never the king. Number two, <laughs> Peter plays a bunch of player unknown battlegrounds. You're part of the problem, mate. Yeah. You gotta play Mario and Rabbids. Let's this... get this shit on there, even though it's not on Steam. He has this whole Dota superiority thing, so even he though does, I does, it's so insufferable. I don't, I don't really right. care. I think Dota's fine, but I just like watching it fall. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a it's a big deal. How it's long a big do you deal. think that we're gonna like enjoy this game for? I reckon this game sticks around for a while. Really? I think a hundred percent. I've got. I've got word. I got a man on the inside. You know him as Miles Ross. Hey. I know him as Game Deep Throat. Uh, he's at QuakeCon right now. He says all anyone is playing is PUBG. Yeah, right. It is PUBG, PUBG, Battlegrounds, it's Player not, Unknowns. It's not PUBG. It's uh, it's all established this. It's all anyone is playing over there. So game um, acronym police right here. So yeah, um, even at, even at a you know an event about other shooters, people are talking at about. At what this point? Game. At what point do we get to see more maps? Very soon, very soon, they've announced the desert map, they're just working on it, time's right. It doesn't need more maps right now, Stephanie. Did you read the story you just read out? There you go. Desert map's kinda cool. What about an... No. You were gonna say some fucking dragon map. I was gonna say an underwater map, but that would be awful. <laughs> what, just spear gun everybody? An underwater map? You know who does have an underwater map, though? I would hate to play that. Say it. <laughs> What do we do? Just say Dota. Dota 2 has an underwater map? Boom! And you got it as long as you spent a couple hundred bucks on Dota. Uh, or, you know, or played enough. Anyway, Dota's back on top, of course, uh, now, and it still holds the record for one million concurrent uh, players in a single day. Uh, but for one day, PUBG was king. For one glorious day. One glorious day. And speaking of Steam and Valve, Late last week, the writer of Half-Life revealed on his website what appears to be a proposed plot for Half-Life 3, the game that never was and probably never will be. Gordon Freeman's Never Adventure is told to us through a letter to Gertrude Fremont. Do you see what he did there? He took Gordon Freeman. He could turn him into Gertrude Fremont. Oh, it's all like... It's like a girl version. Exactly, and it's like my uh, my uh, no non-disclosure agreement would never let me say Gordon Freeman, but I'm gonna get around it by calling her Gertrude. Um, <laughs> so basically, he, he, he sort of wrote on his blog, here's a synopsis of what he calls a fanfic. Right. 
The plot basically uh, follows Gordon and Alex as they go to the Antarctic uh, to find the mysterious research vessel known as the Borealis uh, as it's phasing in and out of reality. Oh. Yeah, which is very exciting. Uh, and so the guy, the writer's name is Mark Laidlaw. He left Valve about 18 months ago, but like I said, he's sort of calling this a, 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 a fanfic and says it was, quote, a gender swapped snapshot of a dream I had many years ago. Oh, what a glorious dream. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, this is confirmation that dream is dead. Because it's like, why would he release the story so if they're That's working so on this true. game? <laughs> Unless they just everyone's radically Everyone's getting changed so excited, but logically, you look at this, that means that that will never see the light of day. Uh, but anyway, there's a giant slug in it, has a human brain, phasing oh, yeah? dimensions, okay. G-Men. Uh, and I feel like the phasing dimensions with the, the ship going in and out may have been... Because the whole thing about Half-Life right, was Half-Life 1 was revolutionized storytelling in games and the silent protagonists sure. and shooting mechanics sure. and everything. Half-Life 2 brought in the gravity gun. Mm -hmm. Half-Life 3 needed that thing that was like... We're changing the game again and maybe shifting reality, phasing in and out the whole game. Yeah. Could have been that. Or. Or. Boobs. What? If they gender swap for Oh, right, okay. I thought you meant. I was like, I'm pretty sure there maybe are. Maybe that's what the game needs. There are boobs in the other two games. And I don't mean that in a sexist way, I mean that in a feminist way. Yeah. Because that's, I, can, I can do that because I'm a lady. Is it like, yay, boobs? Yeah. Not like, boobs. <laughs> Moving on. Do we have titles for the next picker? I never remember. No. Discussion time, it's discussion, discussion time. time. So one of the cool thing I just wanted to touch on today is a cool initiative that's been brought forward by uh, the IGEA. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Interactive Games Entertainment Association of Australia. Yep. Um, so it's called the Working Lunch, and it's basically, it's basically an initiative that brings uh, a bunch of women that are established in the games industry with women who are kind of more entry level oh. to kind of create a, a sort of mentorship program like for them. Like a networking kind of situation. Yeah. Of a, a delicious young one, one of your mentors right here. Really? Yeah. No. Dead set. You? Gonna mentor some people? Teaching people what? I mean, we do a lot of important work here, Nick. I know we do. And I have a lot of wisdom to pass on. You don't want to pass it on because they'll take our job. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, I think it's just generally still a little bit of an unbalance in terms of women working in the industry. So I think it's just nice to have events. We can Make create a, a sense of solidarity and kind of share experiences and bolster each other up and so on. So if that's something that interests you and you're looking to get into the games industry and you're just not sure, you know, what avenue to take, this might be a great option for you. It starts, uh, the first one's in February next year and you can find out more at workinglunch.online. I got three things to say about this. One, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Two, don't take our jobs. <laughs> three, what's for lunch? What is the lunch? Do you know oh, what you're serving yet? Uh, no, I mean, I think February's a long, long lead time to start thinking about menu options. I don't know, it sounds pretty popular, I might need to plan. But, um, I mean, I hope it's something delicious. Yeah, I don't know, some baked Alaska or something. That's something <laughs> I learned about today. <laughs> Moving on though, here's what's coming out this week. It's Monday the 28th of August and here's what you can soon play. Today is a landmark day for Destiny 2 as the beta, yes the one from a month ago, finally launches on PC. If you've been one of the poor console souls waiting half a decade for the chance to play Destiny, I hope your GPU gets the workout it deserves. Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle is Mario's first new game for the Switch and it's freaking awesome! With its deep tactical combat, faithful Mushroom Kingdom skin, and honey guns... Honey that boy! It's like XCOM 2, but heaps cuter. But don't say that too loud, because XCOM 2's long-awaited DLC is out the same day. War of the Chosen just about doubles the amount of content from the 2016 release. With new enemies and locations and heroes, there are now just so many more ways for you to get your squad killed. But if well-planned murder isn't your cup of tea, sneaking its way onto PS4 and PC is Absolver, a martial arts RPG from former Ubisoft devs. So expect lots of follow quests between fistfights, it's just in their DNA. Ark Survival Evolved has been an early access for so long they could name an ASIC period after it. The Ark ASIC period comes to an end on the 29th when the game finally goes gold. And even after all this time, it's still the best pooping sim on the market. If you manage to get through Tuesday without taking out a second mortgage, then perhaps play a round of Everybody's Golf to celebrate. As the new installment in the Hot Shots series, don't expect a laborious sim, this is all about hitting the ball so hard it catches fire. And finally, part one of the Life is Strange prequel Before the Storm is here to make you feel like an angsty teenage girl again. This time you play as chain-smoking, mum-hating Chloe Price. That's what you can soon play. What are your picks? Let us know in the comments and sign up with St. George and you can get $50 when you open a new account to get you playing sooner. 
So, plenty of games coming out this week. Uh, it's so good to be out of the drought. However, there's like six games or something coming out on the 29th, and that's bullshit. How are we supposed to play all these? This is such a good week. I'm so excited for this week. Ooh, okay. What's your pick? My pick is Life is Strange Before the Storm because I love that series and I'm really excited to play as Chloe, though I'm interested that they don't have the rewind mechanic. We'll talk about this later. So yeah, we'll I'm, talk. I'm excited. She's very excited. I'm excited for that as well. Uh, I have not finished Life is Strange. Do you think I need to to get this? Yes! Probably, I need to get on there. Everyone keeps talking about it. I'm excited for that as well. I'm excited for XCOM. I'm excited for a bunch of stuff here, but it's Mario and Rabbids for Nikki. Oh my God! Hey, Cover like me in that nothing honey! Nothing but good things about this game. Like people that are going nuts for it. Honey! <laughs> my God, that game is so good. Uh, so yeah, phenomenal. Uh, what are your picks? Let us know in the comms. Let's teen speak for comments, which <laughs> would come about, out of. About to say, I'm pretty sure comms is already short for communications. Uh, not for the life of strange kids. Uh, it's prize time. It's time for prizes. It's prize time time. It's prize time, prize time. Let's copyright Stephanie Ben Dixon, 2017. Uh, it is prize time. What time is it? The best time. It's the best time for prize time. <laughs> uh, now, last week on the TV show Screenplay, 10 p.m. 7 8 Thursdays, uh, we ran a competition where you could win a Cerberus mouse, keyboard, and headset. All you had to do was take this image of Steph on a green screen, easy for you to do, and do something weird with it. And weird things you did with it, you did. People did so many weird things to you last week, I was nervous and excited about what weird things people would do to me this week. I I'm very excited by the variety, because what did we see? We'll go through some runners-up. Aaron Phillips, runner-up. I love this one because I like I actually look really good in those pants, even though those are not my pants. Those are Kevin Richardson's pants, I believe. I don't want to point out the fact that when you saw this picture, you said, "What band is that?" And I was appalled. Okay, but to be fair, the best band. Peak ba Backstreet like Boys. I was obsessed. Yep. You know, when I was 13 years old. Yep. They look very different now. They have grown up into Backstreet like, men. Who's this guy on the end? That's Nick Carter, motherfucker. Like, what happened to his beautiful blonde waterfall of hair? That it was... just went up. It's just pointing up All to right. the sun like a sun god. <laughs> uh, next runner up, Emma Stoddard. I'm a pop vinyl. This is awesome. You've even got a little remote control. Yes. She painted the whole thing herself. And the hair color is just spot on. on I point. would take this to my hairdresser and be like, make me like this, please. I, I would chop off a little bit there on the left hand corner. Would you indeed? Um, good eyebrow game as well. Yep. See, I tried to deflect with a comment, but it didn't work. Emma Bugs. What's great about this is it's edible. It's edible, <laughs> and that immediately wins points with me. I think anyone who knows me knows that edible things this are is the best. This is candy bark, which I'd never heard of before, but I'm very excited this now in my life. And I love those little silver balls. They remind me of like childhood birthday cake. Totally, yeah, 100%. I love your giant hand as well. We've also got Tyron Carboon, who took all of the competition entries from this competition and made you out of them. It's so good. It's good work, although it's you do so look good. like a monster from my nightmares. Like imagine if that was all moving all the time, you made noises like insects. Yeah, it looks <laughs> it looks like I'm trying to like, when there's like a demonic presence mm -hmm. that's trying to come forth in, in a physical form, yeah. this is what that looks like to me. I'm, I'm trying to formulate myself in the physical realm. Yeah, right. And I'm not quite there yet. I call that Pete. Uh, Regan Lowe. It's another game! Another video game. Uh, pretty amazing. You go through, this one's a beat em up. So would, you go through and you just, you just beat up a bunch of people. Uh, you lose the first time, but then you seem to get superpowers and you demolish. Mm. Our final runner up, and I think this is my favorite, <laughs> Quinn Forrester, who just, who used the power of the green screen to remove you from the image. And it's so isn't simple. that the best rendition of me yet? It's so, it's so <laughs> simple and wonderful. Uh, but of course, they had to be a winner. Yes, the winner for me was by Shane Werner, and it's this beautiful watercolor artwork. They've he's put me into the Uncharted game next to Nathan Drake, and I mean, what a team! This is this is the most emotionally devastating part of that game as well, mm. where he and Elena are on that elevator thing, having the conversation about their relationship, and you're like, are they gonna break up? I know, but I feel like you know, I look like the wisecracking one in that photo. You do. You're he a bit looks, like he looks hey. really thoughtful, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just like. Let's just steal some treasure. <clears throat> You're ruining the emotional moment. So congratulations, Shane. Beautifully done. You have won yourself a Cerberus mouse, keyboard, and headset thanks to lovely people at Evatech Custom Computers. Uh, if you want to win things, 
watch the bloody TV show, mate. Watch it, mate. Uh, I mean, you don't have to because the the thing comes on Facebook and everyone has access to Facebook. But like, but watch I feel it. Like if you're a good person. Yeah, because we have good jokes in there about how the terms and conditions are always bullshit. <laughs> uh, so we will contact someone and get them to send you uh, your shit uh, by getting your address from you on Facebook. And if you want to see the rest of these pictures, there is a gallery on our Facebook page of all the entries. I think I'm gonna start putting them up online uh, on, on Instagram and and frame them and put them in my bedroom because they're just they're so good. They're so good. I would love to get that watercolor if he's willing willing to send it in. Oh, I would yeah. also love to get that pop vinyl uh, because we could put it on the desk because we have all these pop vinyls. Yeah. We put it on the desk. And if, maybe the candy bar because I want to know what that is. If you're willing to part with your works, we would so love to display them on our set because they're just, we're stoked. You we're are stoked willing to part with your works, by the way, because I just want to point out that we got some of the previous competition <gasps> entries. Yes, the post. Oh. The Miles beard. There's so much loose hair in there. There is so much loose hair. I don't think I was expecting quite this much loose hair. Um, but loose hair there certainly is. So we now can't take this out of the wrapper. Well, we're gonna put it behind glass, I think. Yeah, yeah, we and need so to. So it's immortalized properly and we can display it on our set. We need to quarantine that bad boy. <laughs> uh, we also got in uh, from Erica Campbell, the uh, the felt Nikki. This is so great. The underwear. Oh, you're just tickling your little belly. Yeah, but like, I, I'm way fitter here than I am in real life. <laughs> get up a little, little... This is dangerous as well because, I mean, this is voodoo doll territory. So if you oh, ever, 100%. You know, if you ever cut my hair again, then I can just cut off your entire head. All right, this is, I mean, we always go to a dark place from now on. Uh, and also, this came in as well. Uh, there were two of these, unfortunately, um, to the, our good friend Alec Cook. Uh, one of the frames broke, the frame that you did, uh, but this is for you, a, Siri. a Siri, and for me, a Crash Bandicoot. Or it could be the other way around, but I think it's unlikely. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much guys for sending in all your beautiful artworks. We would love to, we would love to just accept all the art and cool competition entries you make. Our address is on the screen right now. Well, that's it for the show today, but coming up later this week, we've got everything that we're, oh, don't put your tongue on it. I already have. We've got all our favorites from Gamescom. There's more Dream Daddy with a little bundle of excitement. And on Thursday nights, 10 p.m. on 7, mate, Screenplay is on your televisions. We've got Madden, we've got Everybody's Golf, we've got QuakeCon, we've got it all. You can follow Screenplay in all of these places. Details are in the description below. And that's it for today's show, but as always, we have one of your wonderful clips to play us off. Yes, we've got Callum J. Lear, mm -hmm. who went on hammer time in Rainbow Six Siege. Check the stairs, Duncan. <laughs> oh, what the f <laughs> oh my god, you have to see that. Thank you for sending that in, Callum, but don't be shy, the rest of you, if you've got a clip you want to share with the world, then send it to us on Twitter using the hashtag ScreenplayMyClip. Yes, you can send it to at ScreenplayAU or at NickBoy or at Hexter. We're done, goodbye! Bye! It's just so floppy. Yeah, too floppy. Yeah, I mean, you've got a very long torso, they've captured that really well. It is voodoo! <laughs>